So if you think about um, going into a career in academic leadership, right? you start as a faculty member, you build up a group, you lead your group, then maybe you move on to being a center director or a department head, um, and you lead that, and then um, you start thinking about whether to become a dean. right? And so um, when thinking about becoming a dean, you think about the institution and the college history before you think about you know, sort of finer scale details. Um, and if you want to do big things, then you need to be at a big place, right? So what does Penn State bring to um, the table as a potential employer for, for a dean of engineering? Well, it's got a 121-year-old history of really outstanding um, engineering leadership in the community. It has that long um, history of being a, a land-grant university and, and all of the mission that a land grant brings, Penn State um, really continues to embrace, not all the land grants do, but Penn State really embraces what it means to have land grant uh, in, its, in its mission and its meaning. Um, and you've got outstanding faculty in so many different departments um, that, that bring you know, the ability to build and, and do great things. And so um, the other thing I've come to learn at Penn State is that you know, because it's big, it has tremendous breadth, um, and so in these 12 departments and multiple institutes and centers that we have, we have the traditional big departments um, that form the, really, uh, in many ways, the base of what we do. You know, we're world class in mechanical engineering, electrical, computer science, civil engineering, chemical engineering, the, the, the departments that you expect to see in every big land grant engineering school. But we also have um, <clears throat> maintained a commitment to what I would call sort of the the smaller jewels in the crown, right? A, a crown has to have a big solid golden base and it has to have the, the jewels that set it apart. Um, so we're just about the only place that still has, you know, architecture engineering where we are you know, arguably the strongest in the, in the country. We still have a commitment to an acoustics engineering graduate program that really makes us stand out in, in that domain. Um, and at ZTAP, we have a school that encompasses um, not just all the commitments we need to make to our young uh, incoming engineering students, but programs like the Engineering Leadership Program, um, where we were the first in the country, um, and even just seven years ago, the last time someone assessed them, ranked number one. We have HESI, the Humanitarian Engineering um, and Sustainable Entrepreneurship Program that I describe as being a, a marriage of, of Wall Street with the Peace Corps that brings in 50% of its students participating in our engineering, but 50% from around campus um, to, to really bring uh, to fruition that, that mindset of engineering humanity that we espouse. Um, and, and also the entrepreneurship program, which is now really strong across campus and, and a university-wide initiative, really has its root source in engineering in SEDTAP, um, and that continues to thrive as an engineering program as well. And so we have these, these smaller programs. Um, engineering Science and Mechanics is another great example that bridges uh, science and, and engineering and mechanics together in a way that always tries to be one step ahead and at the cutting edge of, of where the, the community is going. And so Penn State has that balance between breadth and depth, um, history and modernity, um, and vision for, for a future that, that you know, it's hard to, to not be attracted to. So I think one of the things in my career um, that maybe is a little unique in terms of, of dean preparation, um, well, actually two things. One is I have an academic history in my life. My parents were uh, all in, in the professorhood in, in a variety of different disciplines and um, institutions, and so I had a different perspective uh, coming from them. Um, but throughout my career, as I've moved from institution to institution, I've never been in the same discipline twice. So my degrees were nuclear engineering. My first academic appointment was nuclear engineering. I then spent 16 years in mechanical engineering, eight years in material science and engineering. Um, but early on, I became a fellow of the IEEE. So I never really fit into one discipline um, in the way. So I feel much, in, in some ways, I feel more comfortable as a dean because I've got that, that broader multidisciplinary reach uh, that's harder to maintain when you're in just one department. So when I think about what, um, what it means to be in a discipline, I think of the discipline that we're in as engineering. I don't think of a chemical engineer working with a mechanical engineer as being an interdisciplinary effort. I think engineering needs to rethink its, its place in society um, as interdisciplinary, but when I say that, I mean engineering working with disciplines outside of engineering. Um, and so I think by bringing that, uh, that perspective of engineering as the discipline um, I hope to propagate the idea of, of taking down um, some of the barriers that maybe stop people 
from as efficiently working together as they might anyways. Um, so our faculty are great at working across department boundaries, um, but I think we want to infuse in our students the idea um, that we are all engineering um, and that we work together to solve humanity's problems. And when we reach out, we need to reach out beyond our own, our own box of engineering into, into the, the broader realm of campus and, and, uh, and the world. So I think Penn State right now in engineering is poised um, to really take on the mantle for where the engineering community needs to go in the 21st century. Right? So a few years back, maybe 10 years back, the National Academy came out with its grand challenges for engineering. Um, and then uh, the United Nations also has its list of, of issues that humanity is facing, um, which, isn't co which isn't called grand challenges for engineering, but pretty much every one of them requires engineering to, to play a role in the solution. So engineering has over a thousand year history of saving the world. Um, I think we need to once again step in and fulfill that role. And what I'd like to bring to Penn State and the impact I'd like Penn State to then have um, within the engineering sphere um, is, is taking on that mantle of leadership and showing the engineering community that we need to engage in the world more actively. Um, so I'd like to see us really build uh, intertwined programs with other departments, other colleges. Uh, we're having a lengthy discussion about uh, a big initiative in law policy and engineering. Um, but that will really even span outside of law policy and engineering and bring in science and ethics and, and all sorts of disciplines across campus. That's, that's just where we're starting. Um, I also see Penn State Engineering as taking on a leadership role uh, in some of the old classic not yet solved problems um, on the social side in terms of diversity and inclusion and climate. And so we've already begun the process of um, working towards gender equity in our undergraduate program within six years. Uh, we'll be the first major land grant to even come close to it, let alone reach 50%, which we will do. Um, and, and that mindset, though, of diversity, inclusion, and climate will um, really go beyond just the gender equity in the undergraduate program to the graduate program, the faculty and the staff, and also to, to uh, really create a climate where uh, diversity and inclusion is, is part and parcel of what we do. That it, it, you know, the ultimate goal is to not have to talk about it anymore, um, and I'm hoping to put us on the course to getting there. So there's, I mean, there's always challenges when you want to do big things, right? If there were, if there weren't any challenges, they would have been done already. Uh, is the way I like to, to remind people. Um, so, you know, I think the first challenge on the gender equity is um, sort of the belief system in in people believing that we can do it, right? So the the most common response is, you know, that's fantastic, but how are you going to do it? You know, you look at the the pipeline numbers and and you know, the fact that so many girls lose interest in science and math, even in middle school, and, um, you know, all the, all the standard things that we all know about. But to me, uh, engineering is about solving the problems. Um, you know, I like to say that it was in, you know, 19, in the 60s, uh, JFK stood for, this was 55 years ago, JFK went forward and said, we're going to put a person on the moon by the end of the decade. It took less than seven years from that speech to, to Neil Armstrong putting his foot down. If engineering can solve that, we can certainly solve this. Um, we know from the numbers of our applicant pool and the number of students we admit that we have more than enough very well-qualified female students applying interested in engineering degree from Penn State. And our goal now, or our job, is to increase that number, but then do a much better job of getting them into the program and seeing them succeed in the program and graduate. So, um, you know, I think the, pro the main challenge is um, helping people understand that it's really a solvable problem, that it's just a matter of the will to do it. So I would say that, that this is now the end of my seventh week as dean, and I would have to say it's the most social seven weeks I've ever had in my life. Um, you know, I come into Penn State, it's a big college of engineering internally, it's 95,000 living engineering alums around the world, it's our corporate friends, parents, you know, so many layers of people to, to get to know, not to mention the students we have now, uh, which is another 10,000. And so um, really I'm spending a lot of my time getting to know who we are internally, getting to know who we are externally, um, and starting to talk about where I think we need to go as a college. But human engagement is critical. Um, we've already started talking about, you know, building a team to help us with the gender equity initiative that includes internal people 
and alums and corporate constituents. Um, we have a fantastic engineering ambassadors program that started here at Penn State that's, that's gone elsewhere also. Uh, and we've come up with the idea of you know, creating the, the, the concept of an ambassador for life. Right? So you've been an ambassador while you're an undergraduate here, and then you leave and you go into industry, um, but why should you stop being a Penn State ambassador? Our, our alums are so enthusiastic, and if there's one thing they want more of, it's more connectedness to us, and we're gonna do everything we can um, to keep the family close. Happy Valley really is aptly named, that people here really are friendly and happy, and. Um, you know, while you want to, to believe it when you come in, it's really been pleasantly surprising just how true that mantra has been. I grew up in the Chicago area. My uh, entire family was really Northwestern centric. And so when it came time for me to graduate high school and go to college, I went to Illinois. Um, I've been a um, state school, land grant school person really my entire life since graduating high school. Uh, growing up in the Chicago area, I was, of course, a big sports fan. And so you know, when you think of the, the quintessential diehard Cubs fan, you were looking at them. Um, and so I do follow uh, day by day, game by game, how the, how the Cubs are doing. Uh, I'm also an animal lover, music lover. Um, I have kids, and uh, we spend a lot of time writing new lyrics for old songs and giving voices to our dogs uh, and, and playing sports and games of all sorts. This position is particularly exciting because I believe it affords me the chance to impact the world in a way that I might not otherwise have been able to do. I have a good friend uh, at another major um, private school of, of high repute who just got into the National Academy and you know, her comment to me when I congratulated her was that I would be able to have far more impact on the world as Dean at Penn State than she ever did uh, in her National Academy uh, achieving research. Now, I can debate her on that because she's done tremendous things, but I really do see uh, the opportunity here between our, our size, our history, our scale, um, and perhaps most important, the, the underlying enthusiasm of our faculty, students, and alums um, who, who want to change the world, who want engineering to uh, continue to change the lives of, of people of Pennsylvania, the United States, and, and the entire globe. So there's probably 10 answers as to why gender equity to me comes across as the first uh, major impact area for engineering to tackle on the social side, right? I mean, we have big challenges to tackle on the engineering and science side, and we're gonna do that, um, but our faculty come knowing they're gonna do that. I think the, the gender equity at the undergraduate level, uh, to me, is the starting point for, for something bigger, and so, you know, one can articulate gender equity as, as a core social justice cause. Um, why should one group of, of Americans have different opportunities than the other? Um, you could also make the case for gender equity on the, the business economic side. All the studies show that the more diverse group working on a problem, the more successful the people are at solving it. The companies that have the most diversity tend to have the best bottom line. Um, and one can look at it from a nationalistic point of view. There are two and a half billion Chinese and Indian um, natives living on the planet who are working hard to further their own economies. There's only about 340 Amer million Americans. And if we're going to you know, maintain a competitive lead uh, economically in terms of science and technology impact, we can't waste half our population. So, so really there's, there's no good reason not to do it. And you know, when people ask me, why would you do that? I ask them, why wouldn't I? Um, the other aspect of it is, you know, by starting with the undergraduate population, which is over 8,000 students, uh, we're taking on the big piece first. So if we get gender equity in our undergraduate population, I know that gender equity in our graduate population will follow thereafter, in part because so many of our own students will want to stay for grad school, but in part, Penn State will be known as the large state land grant university where there's gender equity in engineering. Um, and that will then help us roll out um, you know, equity and inclusion for, um, from a multicultural perspective at the faculty level, the student undergraduate level, the graduate level, the postdoc level, really across the board. If you, if you solve the biggest challenge first, the other challenges come more easily.